from this back over here under law, just like we do today. That you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ into another gospel, which is not another. But there be some that trouble you that would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. Now, you know, Paul, he just told it like it was. He says, when you're saying we're saved by grace, but now you're taking us back under works of the law, you're accursed. Because that's a false gospel for today. It was correct here. But it's false today because the law has nothing to do with the body of Christ. Okay? Make sense? I hope so. Uh, where am I here now? Okay, uh, you did run well. Who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? I have confidence in you through the Lord that you will be none otherwise minded. But he that troubleth you shall bear his judgment, whosoever he be. It's an individual person. And then uh, chapter 5, verse 7. Uh, that's verse 10. Give me verse 7, Kelly. Or did I just read it? Okay. I'm sorry. Okay, I already read it. I'm way ahead of myself. I'm sorry. Again, 1 Thessalonians 2, 18. Wherefore, we would have come unto you, even I, Paul, once and again, but Satan, what did he do? Satan will try to hinder truth. That's why it's vital that you and I, we are aware of this. So we can stay prayed up, studied up, and we don't have anything to fear. Amen? Just always come down on Scripture. Not what I say, what our doc, what does God's Word say? Come down on that. Okay? He says then in, uh, where am I here? I don't even know where I am. 3 5, thank you. For this cause, when I could no longer forbear, I sent to know your faith, lest by some means the tempter have tempted you, and our labor be in vain. Therefore, brethren, we were comforted over you in all our affliction and distress by your faith. Uh, for now we live if we stand fast in the Lord. Uh, Paul was thrilled. He knew that the tempter would come and try to take him away from the dispensation of grace, the mystery program. But he got word they were still standing at that time. And he says, boy, we're joying about that, that you haven't caved in to when he came to tempt you away from the truth. Okay? Uh, another, let me see here. I'll go down to this. They were not deceived, did not be falsely persuaded, were not ignorant of Satan's devices, were on guard. Thus they stood in Paul's doctrine of the mystery of grace. But Satan doesn't give up, and he even intensifies the battle. Just because, you know, we discern what's right and say no, that doesn't mean he gives up. Okay? Then it says in 2 Thess Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1, now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that you be not soon shaken in mind or troubled, neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us. Somebody sent false letters, said it was of Paul, and it wasn't. As that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. So that tells me in the last days, there's not going to be a great revival with the body of Christ. For Israel one day, not us, falling away from the truth. And uh, I just think those are just great verses there. They were being challenged to place themselves uh, steadfast in this dispensation and don't place themselves under Israel's program. See, what they were doing was they were getting them, it, it was about the coming of Christ, they were trying to get them to believe in the revelation when Christ comes back down to earth and not the rapture. You see that? That means they're going through the tribulation. Uh, that goes on all the time. Again, 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 3 and 4. 
as I besought thee to abide still at Ephesus when I went into Macedonia, that thou mightest charge some that teach no other doctrine, neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies, which minister questions rather than godly edifying, which is in faith, so do. From which some having swerved have turned aside unto vain jangling. That's this telethon. That's what that sounds like to me. Vain jangling. You forgive me. Desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say nor whereof they affirm. <laughs> Constantly taking us back to the law. Verse 6, uh, verse 7, I'm sorry. I did that, okay. Timothy is told to stand against contrary doctrine and stand up for truth. I'm going to skip all those verses there, Kelly. Uh, first and second Timothy and Titus, okay. Being scripturally is not enough. We have to rightly divide it. Satan uses God's own word to produce deception. Their false doctrine is scriptural, but not rightly divided. So the first, time, the first line of attack is upon the church that's preaching and teaching the dispensation of the grace of God. The revelation of the mystery program for today. Satan uses false teachers, man's traditions, fables, and even scripture to attack the truth of God about this present dispensation. Satan tries his best to obscure the mystery program, to blind Christendom's minds to misunderstanding it, to cause misinterpretation that corrupts doctrine that's for today. Thus, when we don't stand in dispensational truth, that allows Satan the opportunity to carry out his spiritual wickedness and slandering in heavenly places. Revelation 12.10 just reminds you a little bit of that. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now has come salvation and strength, talking about Jews and so on, and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ for the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. You know, I can imagine even in the heavenlies today, Satan tries to remind God how unfaithful, how ungodly, and how in unbelief Israel even is today. <laughs> and I know if he accuses them, I know he accuses the body of Christ. That's for today. So that's the battle. He, he attacks our message the first thing. And uh, it's amazing uh, what people might say out there. Uh, I think some people, uh, you, you give them something to read, right, Doug? <laughs> you give them something to read, they won't, they're scared to read it. Why are they so afraid of truth? Why are they so afraid even if it's wrong, it should bolster their truth that they think they're believing in never be afraid of truth if it's truth right you shouldn't be afraid of that and so I just think that uh, our message will constantly be attacked but I see uh, what some light <laughs> I see some blessings that more people are beginning to grasp rightly dividing and especially in our own church. I'm so thankful for Grace Point. After what I've been learning in all of this and been through all the attacks of the message that we hold dearly, that uh, what a place of refuge uh, to be able to come and to be able to write some silly letters up on a board, poor writing ability and all that stuff, but be able to you couldn't put this up at most of Christendom churches today. And to be able to be able to do it freely without recourse or even in faith, boy, that is a, I thank God for a grace point. Sometimes you wonder why things happen in life. When I left Emmanuel, uh, I'd been talked about like a dog. And I've had so many bad things said about me. And it's been, I mean, it's been unbelievable. It's just unbelievable. And sometimes you say, Lord, 
I, I need your strength here. Why, why is all that happening? And then, you know, you go, I went down to university, and by the way, I was at Emmanuel for right close 30 years, 29 years or something. And I'm not a church hopper. <laughs> I proved that. But I go down there, and then they begin to control you, what you're supposed to do. And they were there first and everything. And I leave, I said, God. But then you look back, we couldn't have come here immediately from Emmanuel. It never, never could have happened. And it would hurt to me feeling, I, I don't want to do that. And so uh, I promised them I'd stay five miles away, and we're a little over five miles away. And uh, I love them with all my heart. I, I put that many years in there, I, I love them. And I uh, wish them the best. But yet, I'm so grateful that I had to go through my wilderness. <laughs> Some of you went there and came here. I'm sorry you've had to travel with me a little bit. Okay, <laughs> but thank you for hanging, okay? I appreciate that. But uh, I, I wondered why. But then God began to introduce to me to other people, whether it be Les or whether it be Dr. Jordan or whether it be, uh, uh, well, I can't even think his name now. Uh, oh, well, just several people. Uh, Dr. Stam even more and a bunch of people. And so that never would have happened and so now as I look back and I see all of it and all the trials and heartaches I've been through, through all of this stuff, I just say, thank you, God. Uh, I wouldn't change it for anything. I huh? wouldn't change it for anything. And I'm just grateful that we can tell the truth. Yeah, I just am. And so uh, Satan, he attacks the message. And so I have to look at it in a way that... Uh, I know that Satan gets behind what people even say sometimes. You know what I mean? And you understand what's going on. It, it, it's, he hates our message. And he'll try to belittle, uh, try to tear us down the very best that he can. And so we really need each other. Do you know that? Uh, I mean, we need each other uh, to be able to encourage each other. Uh, I don't think I could ever go to a church again that didn't teach rightly dividing. I, I don't think I could handle that. I'd go crazy. I mean, sitting there and, and having error after error after error be taught me, you know, I, I couldn't handle that. And so I, I just want to praise God tonight. But holding on to this message has been a battle. So I'm hoping this tells you that you need to really pray for us. Pray for your church that we will honor the message of the dispensation of the grace of God in such a way that it won't give Satan the opportunity in the heavenlies to lambask God's manifold wisdom, okay? And that we live it, uh, we're proud of it, and share it. And by the way, when you share it, you're excited about sharing it with somebody don't expect them to grab a hold of that the first time you say something to them. You know, remember, they, they, they've had all these years of indoctrination. I've been there. And uh, it just, you know, it, it, it takes word upon word upon word upon contact. And if they're open-minded and they will listen to your verses, it will click. God will use that eventually. But don't expect it immediately. Because what you're saying to them, what they've been following has been wrong. Now, let me just say about probably 40% of what they have learned. Because we still teach there's one God. He's revealed himself in three persons, right? Uh, we believe in the deity of Christ. We believe in the inspiration of scriptures without error. Uh, we believe uh, what salvation by grace through faith. Uh, we believe in living godly and holy and all these things. So we believe on so many wonderful things together, okay? So you just have to pray that somehow that the scales will fall off their eyes so that they can get a hold of it. And that comes through you being tactful with them. You don't beat them over the head with it. Huh? Uh, you know, we're crazy sometimes. We need to be wise about that. And uh, you need to pray for them. And I think that's the greatest thing is you give them truth and you pray. You give them truth and you pray. And I think God can begin to break down the barriers there. 
Uh, so I'll get off my little thing here, okay? Okay. <laughs>